All right, so today uh, I'm going to show you guys how to do ultrasound guided percutaneous tracheostomy. If you're familiar with the percutaneous tracheostomy approach, this is similar, but I've modified the first couple steps to use the ultrasound to make it safer, easier, and faster. So the setup is the same as the percutaneous approach with the Blue Rhino kit. Um, and obviously I've added an ultrasound. So on this patient, he's skinny. You can actually feel his anatomy. So this is a good patient to actually learn on when you're starting. And I'll show you the findings on ultrasound to, to correlate to his physical exam. So first thing is setting up the patient just like you do for a percutaneous tracheostomy, supine, neck extended. And then I set up all my, my set here uh, just in the order that I'm going to use it. So first thing I recommend is taking a look with the ultrasound and just looking at the anatomy for any blood vessels that it could be in the way. So I'm going to start with the transverse approach. You can see his thyroid cartilage there, or thyroid uh, gland there. And you can see his trachea underneath there. The trachea is going to be black with air. You can actually see his endotracheal tube, which is that bright white line. So I don't see any blood vessels in our path. So then I'm going to turn it longitudinally, which I think is uh, really helpful to locate your spot that you're going to put the uh, uh, tracheostomy in. So now I'm going vertical here. You can start to see his tracheal rings here in just a second. So you'll see those almost like beads on a string, uh, black dots or ovals. Those are his tracheal rings. And if you look a little cephalad to that, you'll see a larger oval uh, black structure. That's going to be his cricoid. Um, so finding the cricoid is really important to localize the tracheal ring that you want to go into. Um, so it's pretty easy to see here. He's, again, he's skinny, so his anatomy is easy. Um, you can also see his endotracheal tube right here. It's a bright, that bright white line. You can kind of see the end of it there, actually. So you could actually do him totally ultrasound guided if you needed to or if you wanted to. But I'm going to use a bronchoscope as a limited uh, portion of this procedure. So, so next I'm just going to get a needle and find the second or third tracheal ring. And I'm going to mark that. So I have his cricoid up there. I'm going to put this needle under the ultrasound here. And you can kind of see, let's see, there's cricoid up there. So there's first ring or so, that's probably about his second ring right there. And that's probably about third right there. So I'm going to numb up right about here. And if the patient's neck is really thick, you're going to want that skin incision a little bit more cranial than your, uh, your site for your tracheostomy placement because you're going to angle the needle down. So. For him, he's pretty thin. We're going to go right over the about the third tracheal ring. Make your skin incision wide enough for the tracheostomy to fit easily. Okay, that looks good. So now I'm going to make sure his sats are good for us to start 100%. Get our wire ready. Get our large bore needle with some saline in it. And this part is just like doing an ultrasound guided central line. So we're going to look with our ultrasound probe here. You can see his tracheal rings. You can see my needle coming in right there. And now we just want to make sure we put the balloon down on the endotracheal tube. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, balloons down. So I'm gonna make sure I'm right in the center there. You kind of see it budding on the trachea, so I'm gonna push in and aspirate. So I have air back. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put my wire in, just like with the central line. There's a little bit of resistance when you're pushing against the endotracheal tube. but now it's flowing in freely. So now at this point, if you're having issues with hypoxia, you can actually put the balloon up and ventilate the patient. He's fine, he's 100%, so we're just gonna move forward. 
you can actually look with the ultrasound again and see where your needle's going. You can see it right there. I'll move it a little bit. You can see that right in the center of the screen, anterior to his trachea. And I'm looking further down to see this part. You can't really see the wire, but you can see when I push down, you get a little faint movement downward. That ensures that the wire is going down towards the carina. So at this point, I'm actually comfortable just go ahead and starting to dilate here with this 14 French dilator. Okay. Okay. Went in pretty easy. So now we're going to get ready with the bronch. So you want to come in with the bronch at this point because we need to move the endotracheal tube back. Since this large dilator can't fit in the trachea while the endotracheal tube is there. So we can actually put the tip in. And wait till we see that on our scope there. Do you see it coming in? Okay, so back it out a little bit. I could see that. I'll go back. So. You can pull back a little bit. It looks like you guys are proximal. T okay, pull back a little bit with the endotracheal tube. Oh yeah, take the tape off of there. Okay, start to pull it back a little bit. How much? A little bit. Keep going, keep going. There, okay, stop. Okay, so now I'm going to dilate all the way to the skin level just once. That's enough. I'm going to pull out. Keep the wire and the white catheter in the trachea. You have your eight shyly here, cuffed. Keep the wire in without putting the white part in. Go ahead and advance the tracheostomy tube over the dilator. Give a little push. There it goes. Remove the wire and dilator and connect to the ventilator after securing. And that's it.